Good afternoon, I'm Nick Friedman and in this video we're going to take a slightly more advanced approach to oral presentation. What I want to do is give you seven tips that can turn you from a good mooter into a great mooter. The first tip, as I explained in the basics video, is don't get stuck too rigidly to a fully written out speech. You don't have to go through it from start to finish. Remember that it's not a public speaking competition, it's a moot. The essential point of which is for judges to ask you questions and for you to respond to them well. Ideally, you want to achieve two things. One, you want to answer the judge's questions clearly and in detail. And two, you're always trying to tell a story, taking the judges on a journey to help them understand how to solve the problem at hand. So when you answer a question, you should always make it clear what part of the story you're now telling. Let the judge's questions help you go through the different parts of your argument. So what I've found to be helpful in the past is rather than writing out a speech word for word, is to have some kind of overarching structure for your speech. Know how each argument fits together to prove your overall point. But be prepared to shuffle your arguments around. The judge may want an answer right at the start of the moot that gets to a point which you are only prepared to deal with slightly later on. It's essential for you to deal with the point precisely when the judge asks you for it. So you need a speech that can accommodate those kinds of ad hoc changes. I find it helpful to have my speech written instead as something like a mind map, a sort of a series of connected ideas that I can jump from one to the other as required. And at any moment I can explain to the judge what I've already proven in answer to her questions and what I still have to talk about. You might also think about structuring your argument as a set of self-contained blocks or parts of a speech which you can shuffle around as necessary. The second tip I want to give you is that it can be very effective to work quotes from cases seamlessly into your speech. It can be a very effective and authoritative mode of convincing the judges. In moots, both sides end up saying, this line of cases says this, or this line of cases says that. And unless a judge is very familiar with the cases in question, the judge doesn't really know how to decide between the two different claims which are being made. So it can be a very effective argumentative technique if you say, my lord, uh, we submit that there are three requirements for responsible journalism as set out in the case of Harry versus Sunday Times and they are, and then you begin to quote from the case. So it gives the judge the impression that you're reading directly from the case and you know exactly what you're talking about. The third tip I want to give you is to say that if you hesitate or if there's a gap in your speaking, that's precisely the moment when a judge is going to pounce on you and ask you questions. So keep up the flow of your speech by using linking words and phrases to create a feeling of continuation between your big arguments. You might say something like, for these reasons we submit that the government has breached Article 2.5 of the treaty, which brings me, my lord, onto my second argument, which is that XYZ. So you're just continually using linking phrases to keep a continuous flow through your speech. The fourth tip is a very important tip which is that you need to anticipate the kinds of questions you're going to get from judges in advance. Your worst case scenario is having to do statutory interpretation on the spot or trying to figure out how to get around a case that goes against you without having thought of it before. It's a trap that many mooters fall into. Before the moot, you need to think of every possible question that a judge might ask you and come up with an answer to it in advance. Even questions that are not relevant or may not seem relevant. A judge might ask you to explain how your interpretation of the statute fits in with the rest of the statute. They might ask you whether your argument is good from a policy perspective, uh, you know, whether the court should even lay down this kind of law. They may ask you how your answer would change if the facts were tweaked slightly differently. So ultimately you need to know more than just your own argument. You need to know about the law around your argument and related to your argument. The fifth point is that you should never tell a judge that their point is irrelevant. Your ideal response to an irrelevant question, which you may well get, should do two things. One, make it seem as though the judge has just asked you the best, most important question of the moot. And secondly, to still show that you have an answer to it, how that answer furthers your case, and that ultimately the point that the judge has made is not devastating to the conclusion you're trying to present. The sixth, second last tip is that the single most difficult thing about mooting 
is that you run out of time to make your argument because of the judge's questions. Many people don't get through all the arguments that they need to make to make sure that their case is watertight. So you need to bear three things in mind. One, know which points to drop and which point is your money maker. If you can make one point before this moot ends, what is it going to be? You need to get a sense of the priority of your arguments. If you don't have enough time to make all the arguments that you wanted to make, what's the one thing that the judge needs to know before you sit down? The second thing to do is to have a two or three line summary of each point in your argument and indeed a short summary of your overall argument so that when the judge says to you, you're out of time, you can say, Your Excellency, for these reasons, this is why we ought to win this case. The third thing to bear in mind is not to panic. No one knows that you haven't completed the speech that you set out, except you. If you end your speech confidently and giving the judge the impression that you've done all you needed to do to fulfill your role, that's the end of it. The fact that you've left out 90% of your speech is unknown to anyone except to you. The final tip that I want to give you is to be responsive to the other team. There's nothing more boring than watching a moot where the two teams speak as though they're in a vacuum. You will have seen the other team's memorials. If you're the respondent, you will have heard their argument already. So you can say things like, the appellants have argued that in the case of Wingrome versus United Kingdom, it was held that freedom of expression may be limited to prevent religious offence to others. However, we respectfully submit, my lord, that they have neglected a crucial part of the decision in that case, which was that national authorities are to be accorded discretion in determining what constitutes such an offence. So you're continually just taking the arguments that they've made and linking your arguments to them. Just a short sentence saying the point that I'm about to make now directly rebuts what we've just heard from the other side. This shows that you're not mechanically sticking to your speech, regardless of what the other team is doing. It also shows that you're being flexible and thinking on your feet. It gives the judge a continual sense of how your argument is better than theirs and where it is defeating theirs. So those are my tips on how to become a better mooter. And remember, the only way to become better at mooting is to continue to practice it. Thank you.